All right, good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to present today. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Joe Drozdek. I'm from The Ohio State University, and our project is multivariate analysis of risk factors for surgical site infection after laparoscopic colorectal surgery. We have no disclosures to report. Surgical site infection and incisional hernia are among the most common complications after colorectal surgery. These risk factors uh, for these uh, complications in open procedures are largely non-modifiable from the perspective of the surgeon. However, a uh, laparoscopic approach and incision type are two modifiable factors that may be used to mitigate these risks. Um, despite that fact, risk factors for these complications at uh, specimen extraction sites during laparoscopic colorectal surgery are not yet clearly defined. Our primary objective, therefore, was to identify both modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors for extraction site wound infection after laparoscopic colorectal surgery. And because there's a close association between these two uh, complications, we also wanted to identify risk factors for decisional hernia as well. We conducted a retrospective analysis of patients at Ohio State who underwent a primary laparoscopic colorectal resection between 2006 and 2012. Exclusion criteria included deceased patients, inmates, patients who had conversion to an open procedure, patients who had specimen extraction via a natural orifice, uh, patients who had opening of extraction site during subsequent reoperation, as well as patients who had laparoscopic ostomy formation or takedown. Outcomes measured um, were diagnosed primarily by physical exam by the attending surgeon. However, we did gather additional data from med medical records as well as questionnaires mailed to patients. These were used to elicit uh, signs and symptoms of wound infections and uh, incisional hernias, as well as capture any incisional hernia repairs that may have taken place at outlying hospitals. Uh, we collected information with regards to these recognized risk factors, broken up here into modifiable and non-modifiable categories. We conducted univariate analysis completed for all these risk factors, and then multivariate analysis for significant predictors. Uh, we identified 419 patients who met our inclusion criteria. As you can see, there's roughly equal distribution between men and women. Um, and it also listed our common diagnoses in this pop patient population, as well as uh, common comorbidities. So in order of our primary objective, we identified a surgical site infection rate of 10.3%. And in rate with our uh, secondary objective, we identified an incisional hernia rate of 5.8%. Here's our uh, outcomes for our univariate analysis, uh, in which four factors were identified as being significant predictors with regards to surgical site infection, those being hand assistance, presence of IVD, age, as well as BMI. With regards to incisional hernia, univariate analysis revealed, again, four significant predictors. Uh, in this case, those were fin and steel incision, diabetes, follow-up duration, as well as surgery duration. Multivariate analysis was conducted for significant predictors in surgical site infection. And these three uh, variables, as you you can see listed here retain their significance. IBD conferred um, three times greater odds of wound infection. BMI just over one time uh, the risk of wound infection. And uh, hand assistance conferred over double the odds of wound infection. This slide uh, summarizes those factors that were uh, deemed significant on our analysis. Uh, of particular interest to us was the fan and steel incision and its protective nature as this was something that's more readily uh, modifiable from the surgeon perspective. So we therefore conducted a further analysis comparing two groups of patients in our uh, study population, patients who underwent fan and steel incision for a specimen extraction and patients who underwent midline extraction, uh, I'm sorry, midline incision for a specimen extraction. However, we did exclude uh, patients who underwent right-sided colon procedures from the midline group as there were no right-sided procedures undertaken through the fan and steel group. As you can see here, there were no uh, differences in these demographic variables amongst these two groups. In terms of additional risk factors uh, between these two groups, there were some significant differences, uh, most notably hand assistance, uh, history of COPD, as well as steroids. Uh, but most interestingly, we identified zero incisional hernias in the uh, fan and steel group compared to midline uh, extraction group. So in conclusion, we, uh, we found that avoidance of hand assistance may reduce surgical site infection. The use of fan and steel incisions may reduce incisional hernias. And that, unfortunately, additional significant risk factors are largely non-modifiable from the surgeon's perspective. Limitations of this study are the retrospective nature of the methodology, uh, duration of follow-up, 
as well as the limited number of patients with pain and steel incisions in the data set. And our future directions will be aimed at uh, alleviating these um, limitations. And I'd be happy to uh, field any questions. Thank you very much. So the, pa the paper is now open for discussion. If anybody has any comments? I have a few. And there's one, Sergio. Senator Laura. Uh, how do you compare at all the length of the time of the surgery with the surgical infection? Uh, in terms of surgery duration, we did, we did uh, take that into account. And uh, am I able to go back to the previous slides? Uh, I'm sorry, he needs to go back to a slide. Which one? Which slide? But surgery duration was, uh, was a significant uh, risk factor in terms of um, in terms of wound infection. Oh, I'm sorry, in terms of incisional hernia, uh, as you can see listed here. And uh, hypotension uh, also through the procedure. I'm sorry, hypotension. hypotension. Oh, hypotension. Uh, no, that was not one of the variables that we assessed for. Okay. So I have a question in terms of the uh, inflammatory bowel disease, mm -hmm. um, because it's it's not been my impression that IBD increases, well, I shouldn't say that. Depending on the type of IBD it is and the type of surgery that's being performed sort of dictates whether or not wound infection rates are higher. So did you break down uh, IBD in terms of uh, which ones had abscess, which ones did not, which ones had fistulas, which ones did not, uh, and specifically the use of either biologics or uh, immunosuppressants in terms of differentiating wound infection? Um, we, we did not look at those uh, specific variables in terms of the IBD population. Um, that is something we could certainly do with this, uh, with this data set in future investigations. Um, in terms of um, immunosuppressants, we just looked at those as a general category of immunosuppressants. We, again, we did not break down uh, the specific categories such as biologics. Another question? I just was curious of... Um, I'm sorry, could you please name, name and introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Judd Collada. I'm a resident at UIC. I uh, was just curious if you had a, an idea of how many of, of the hand-assisted hand assisted surgeries use the fan and steel incision for uh, access. Uh, in terms of the uh, hand assistance, um, most of those took place um, through the midline incisions. And uh, as, there, as you can see, there was a significant difference um, between hand assistance that took place between a fan seal and the midline groups. There was seven in the fan seal group versus 27 in the midline. So that was certainly more common um, in the midline group. However, in terms of uh, complexity of case, there was no, there was no difference between fan and steel and uh, in midline group and use of hand assistance. I think we have time for one more question. Hi, Jake Geisdorfer from New Jersey. Um, I I didn't notice, uh, was there a difference in uh, surgical site infection between fan and steel and midline? Did you compare uh, that, that? That was not a significant uh, predictor. Um, somewhat curiously, it did show a trend towards significance. A p-value was uh, 0 0.08, and my suspicion is that if we were able to capture more patients with fan steel incisions, which we plan on doing in the future, that we would find a significant difference between those two groups. But unfortunately, that was one of the limitations of our data set, was that we only had 64 patients in the fan and steel group. Greater in fan and steel. Sorry? Your, your prediction is that it would be greater in the fan and steel My group. prediction is that we would see less wound infections in the fan and steel group compared to the midline extraction group. And so did I hear you right that you said that none of the right colons were done through fan and steels? That is correct. That's, well, if, when you begin to start doing intracorporeal anastomosis, 100% of your uh, right colons and other colleagues will be able to take into the fan still, and then you'll decrease your incisional hernia rate to almost nothing. You'll really help the patient. So my next, next year when you're talking here on uh, the same thing, you can include intracorporeal anastomosis. That would be great. I look forward to that. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.